Hello there and welcome back to another tutorial from School of Software. In this tutorial we will go through installing VirtualBox and creating a new virtual machine using a Ubuntu ISO. So this is our agenda today. We will have to first download and install VirtualBox, download the Ubuntu ISO, create a new virtual machine and then go through installation and configuration of the Ubuntu from the ISO. So let's get started. So first thing we do is go, we go to the VirtualBox downloads and depending on what your machine is, your host, your main, main, main machine uh, platform, if it's Windows or Mac, the nice thing with VirtualBox is that they support um, multiple platforms. Uh, so it's, it's nice. So in my case, I have a Windows machine, so I'm gonna I'm, I've downloaded. I'm gonna, you need to hit the Windows one and and download that. Um, set, second thing you need to do, you need to download again. Maybe you kick off these downloads before, so that it, sometimes it could take a, a bit time to download ISO, especially sometimes they're bigger. So for Ubuntu, I'm gonna install the server version. Uh, so what is the difference? Uh, if you're trying to use Ubuntu for development or hosting local sites, things like that, you generally don't need the, the user version, um, which, which has the user interface, because uh, that's going to take a lot more space and maybe more memory. So uh, in my case, again, but that's, if that's what you want, you can select that ISO, but in my case, I want to get the server. Uh, Ubuntu server, which is also heavily used in hosting, you know, in, in the hosting providers. That's what they give you, the server version. So if you try and mimic the same, might as well install the server version locally without having a UI, so you, you can get used to using command line and the features it has to offer. So I'm gonna select the latest version. So again, this link I'll, I'll include in the blog post, but I'm gonna select the latest version. And, um, and it's, it's 1910. And go to releases. And this will take you to the release page. This is, a, this is where sometimes you might get a bit confusing. There's a lot of different versions. And if, if you haven't, and I've done, I've done this myself where I, uh, selected and installed the wrong version and I had to do the whole thing over again. So be sure to select the proper version, the correct version for your um, needs. Uh, so you, you want to select, if you have a standard PC, the AMD version 64 bit version. And if you look at the, the you know, the URL of this, the, the first one again, server install image, um, this is, see, this is ARM. This is not what you want. You want the AMD version, 64-bit, and it's the one you want to download. You just click on it. It'll start downloading. I've done, I've done it already, but once it's done, I usually, I usually, um, so I've created a VMs folder in my C drive, just so you can understand uh, how I'm doing it, and I just copy the ISO here or just move it here from downloads folder just so I have it uh, for if I need to use it again. Um, so once you've done that and you also you have also downloaded VirtualBox and installed it. Again VirtualBox installation just follow the, the simple screen you know just the default options is fine there's nothing special you need to configure with that so once you install it you will get a um, an once it runs, you get something like this. Again, you will have it empty. You won't have any VMs here, but you can click on tools here. That's what you want to do to start creating your new VM. Okay. So at this point, we've done the downloads. And now we need to, I'm following our agenda, uh, right? We need to um, create a VM. So what you want to do is come to the uh, tools here and click on new. And this is, it's, 
gonna by default create it in your home directory. That's not what I want. I actually want the fat on the C level. So I'm gonna replace this, this with just CVMs. And I'm gonna just call this VM1. And again, you can name it whatever you want. But uh, I also like to number this the VMs based on um, the IP address that I will eventually end up using. Um, and I'll and again in the next videos I'm gonna cover the networking parts of it. Um, but again, you can name it whatever you want. But if you wanna the, like how I do naming sometimes is following the last number of the IP address so that it's easier for me to remember which IP I need to use to get to which VM if you know if you have multiple VMs especially. So the next thing you want to do is uh, select Linux because we have Linux, Ubuntu 64-bit, um, that's the ISO we have. Click on next. Memory, the more you, the more the, the more the better. But uh, I give at least minimum two gigs. This this is enough to kind of run nicely the Linux um, Ubuntu server. Uh, without causing a lot of issues, so 2 gig of memory is fine. You click on next. Um, default selection is fine on this. I want the 10 gig um, size. Um, click on create. The default selection is fine. I'm not changing that. But here I do want to change. I can't recall exactly what issues I had with dynamically allocated hard disks. Sometimes um, it would show me that it's running out of space. I think so. I again, you can leave it default, but in my case, I want to select the fixed size because I want this VM to um, to be 10 gig and it be fixed size. That's what I want to give it. If I ever want to change it, I can come back and change it. But uh, um, Initially, 10 gig is fine for a VM. In my case, uh, you can select more if you know you have to do a lot more. But um, in my case, it, it's fine. So I'm gonna click on next. That's fine. It's gonna see. It's gonna put it in the VM1 folder in their CVMs. Click on create. This might take a minute or so. And I'm gonna show you the, the easy way to install it from ISR, right? And I know uh, some other videos will show you to uh, attach the ISO as a drive and all that. You can also do that, but I'm gonna take the easy route and I'll show you what I mean. See, once the VM is created, it's turned off. I'm not gonna change any other settings at this point. Okay, I'm gonna just keep it on start. And let's see what it's gonna do. Okay guys, so somehow it's popping up on my second monitor and I can't show you the specific screen. So, but basically you will get a window like this, like this, first time you start the VM, it'll ask you to select the startup disk and you can navigate to your ISO by clicking on the browse button here. And that's gonna select the ISO, attach it and start from ISO. Okay, but if you hit cancel, start the second time, you get this window where no operating system is found. Um, you know, but but if you do it first time, you should get the other window, and that's easier to just select the ISO. But I'm I'm guessing I can also select it from here. That's what I'm gonna try to do and see if that works. Again, this is the first time I'm doing this. I'm gonna select the ISO, and again after selecting ISO, I had to turn it off and then just start again. So it's the same thing, uh, still pretty easy, you just navigate and select the disk, select the ISO, turn off the, you know, turn off your VM, and uh, you could just close it from here, it's gonna ask you if you wanna turn off, say yes, and then start again, it's, then it's gonna, you know, kick off from the ISO, okay? So now let's go to the ISO installation. And again, some of this is just the default selections are fine. Hit, hit enter, English, 
to say uh, keyboard layout, leave it the, the default English, English and sometimes this might take a bit of time um, and I might speed up the video in some, some of these sections but um, usually it takes about 5 or 10 minutes to get this installed not that long um, so we'll continue after this is done and again there's a few screens it's gonna pop up and I'll try to show you all the screens so um, so you're familiar with them Okay, so now it's gonna try to name it the VM and I usually give it the same host name as the name of the VM how I named it VM1 so that's, that's, that's what I'm gonna want the host name to be as well and then hit continue and uh, user Uh, called game your one user you might want to give it your name or something but this is fine and again this is the first account it's gonna create outside of the root user I'm gonna go ahead and create this account but what we gonna do at the end is to set the root password so we can log in as root so because technically it's on my local uh, workstation and I don't want to have a trouble of permissions all the time and this and that I would rather just log in as, as root so it's I'm gonna at the end I'll show you how, how you to do how, how to do that hit continue you want to choose a password continue it's gonna ask to type it again and again you want you need this user because first time to log in into the VM you'll have to use this user um, I forgot what we named the user is it VM1. I'm gonna go back and we'll quickly check to make sure. Oh VM1. Just call call it VM1 user. So it's it's different from the host name. So VM1 user password. Continue. And I'm in LA, so yes, the time zone is correct. Here's the, this is the part for partitioning. Um, I really just go with the select entire disks. You know, you could, I'm not sure what this LVM thing does, but I wanna just select the entire disk. Um, yeah, it's fine. And then you want to select yes, write these changes to the disk. And again, you can use your keyboard to, or the top key uh, to go between the selections that it gives you. Okay, almost there. And again, if you guys have any questions about any of, the, any of this, feel free to write in the comments. I'll try to get to you. Um, or if something doesn't work for you, most likely, again, uh, this will work in the future versions as well. So by the time if you're watching this video and there's like Ubuntu version 20 or Whatever version it has, the usually ISO uh, should work similar. There might be some small menu changes here and there, but usually um, the process will, will be pretty similar. Um, 
And the nice thing with VirtualBox, and again, I'm gonna show you in the future videos as well, but uh, it has a lot of features. I know it looks a simple tool, but it has a lot of really nice and cool features, anywhere from sharing your folders between your Windows machine and the Linux host. Um, I'm gonna hit continue on this as well. And also uh, networking configuration or, you know, um, Another nice thing is like the backups. You can you can take a snapshot of the VM, which we're gonna do at the end of this, just just so you get a, an idea how it's done. It's really simple and quick. And you really wanna do that every time you, you are gonna do something major on the VM. You wanna have a backup. So I'll show you how, how to do that as well. Again. First couple times using it, using VirtualBox is a bit um, tricky if you don't know what you're doing, but uh, once you get a hang of it, it's really easy to use tool. I really recommend it over anything else at this point because number one, it's free, number two, it's cross-platform, and, and it's, it's easy to use. Um, so here I want to do, I, would, I do want to select to automatically install updates. You might want to leave the default, but I'm gonna select that. So this is the, the tricky part here. So out of the box, it gives you all these things you can kind of pre-install. And if that's what you want to do, you should do it. I should mention that um, I will have a link below to Zoom Admin, which is uh, a technology we, we built and I'm the founder of Zoom Admin uh, that allows you to remotely install uh, any of these things on your servers and and again I will have a, a link below to um, a playlist of these videos so you can and towards the end I'll show you how you connect your local VM let me say this again you click your you, you connect your local VM to the one we're just creating with our Zoom Admin cloud-based platform and use Zoom Admin to manage your local VM. Again, it's really something cool. I think no one else has this offering. You can install stuff you want, you can create websites, you can do all kinds of things. I will again leave you to, to that to those videos, but um, you know, in my case, that's why I don't want to install anything else here. But if you want, you can select other stuff. I do want to install SSH server because that's that's something we're gonna use in the next videos as well. But everything else, I'm gonna leave blank. We continue, and it does take a minute or two to get this installed. And again, if you guys really, you know, like the video, have questions. Feel free to write comments or hit the like button, subscribe because there's a lot more videos coming up, specifically on virtual box. Okay guys, looks like it's almost done. Just a couple more minutes, I think we're about to finish the installation. Just hit yes on this one. It's fine. And it says it's trying to finish installation now. Finally, it's asking to continue. Um, yeah. Now it's gonna reboot automatically. And if everything is fine, you should get the login screen in a moment. And remember, you have to use the user you created. During installation to log in. 
So make sure you write down the, the password and the username you, you created before. So we, I think, named it VM1 user. And password. Voila, we are, we have logged in. So 